I do that, I'm going to first elaborate the difficulty because what is clear is that President John Dramani Mahama and the NDC are in total denial. Today, we are all witnesses to the fact that notwithstanding the record amount of resources at the disposal of the John Mahama-led NDC government, our economy is in trouble. Under eight years of the MPP government, as we have kept saying, from 2001 to 2008, taxes and total loans amounted to just 20 billion Ghana cities. In contrast, taxes, oil revenue, and loans alone under the eight-year period of the NDC would amount to 248 billion Ghana cities. Notwithstanding all these resources at its disposal, our economy is in decline. Since 2011, real GDP growth has declined steadily and drastically from 14% with the onset of oil production to 3.9% in 2015. Projected GDP growth for 2016 is even lower Basically, fellow Ghanaians, the economy, notwithstanding the production of oil, is on course to record a lower growth rate than in the year 2000, which was 3.7%. President Mahama's tenure of office has been characterized by declining economic growth. In fact, between 2012 and 2016, that is, during President Mahama's tenure as president, the economy, in dollar terms, shrunk by 5%. Under the NDC, in the last eight years, we have seen a growth in real GDP per capita by 17%, from $1,266 to $1,481. This is with oil revenue. Under John Mohammed's tenure as president, however, capital income in Ghana has declined by 12%. Under the MPP, GDP per capita recorded an increase of 187% in eight years, from $440 US dollars to $1,266 US dollars without oil. This tells us that fundamentally, Ghana's problem is not about resources. Our problem is the efficient and honest management of our resources. The mass cocoa spraying program that we introduced when the MPP was in government has collapsed. Primarily for financial reasons, we've had to endure five years of doomso. Electricity prices in Ghana, thanks to the high taxes and corrupt procurement of power generation, are now amongst the highest in the world. Total debt, Mr. Chairman, fellow Ghanaians, total debt of Ghana after 51 years of independence, and at the time the MPP left office, was just 9.5 billion Ghana cities. Under the NDC, in just seven and a half years, it has increased from 9.5 billion Ghana cities to 110 billion Ghana cities. Mr. Chairman, 90%, 90% Ghana's total debt has been accumulated in the last seven and a half years under the NDC government. And 67% of Ghana's total debt this independence has been accumulated in just the last three and a half years. Under John Mahama, Ghana has now been classified as a country at the high risk of debt distress. Even though Ghana, even though the government has borrowed close to $40 billion in the last seven and a half years, 
the value of total government investment in infrastructure is just about $7 billion. According to the managing director of the IMF, most of Ghana's borrowing under this John Mahama government has been spent on corruption, on consumption, rather than investment. After eight years of mismanagement, the banking system has been pushed to dangerously fragile levels. Eight banks are currently on the verge of collapse. Teacher training allowances have been cancelled, and so have nursing training allowances. And nurses and health assistants are not being posted after completion. Drivers and transport operators have seen a dramatic rise in the cost of insurance, spare parts, license fees, DVLA charges, and fuel. Taxes on businesses have increased dramatically, and new taxes have been introduced as the government tries to fill the gap as a result of the massive increase in expenditure relative to re revenue. For example, we've seen massive increases in the capital gains tax, in withholding taxes, VAT on electricity, financial services, special real estate, special import levy, and taxes have also been introduced on ambulances and bicycles. The NHIS has virtually collapsed. The free maternal care system has also collapsed. Youth unemployment is high and rising. For the first time in our history, we have a graduate unemployed association. Mr. Chairman, fellow Ghanaians, our pensioners are under threat. Currently, the financial viability of the Social Security and National Insurance Trust, SNIT, is in question. The World Bank in its 2016 report on governance of SNIT states that, and I quote, the actuarial valuation shows that the fund becomes cash flow negative in 2019 and all assets will be used up by 2031. At this point, the benefits will have to match the inflows and will lead to very significant cuts in the benefits for current pensioners. This is the World Bank telling us that SNIT is collapsing and that will result in a cut in pension. Under this John Mahama led NDC government, every development initiative or infrastructure project is seen as an opportunity to loot public funds. The money is lost through corruption from create loot and share schemes like SADA, GIDA, Wyoming, Waterville and other judgment debts, Smarties, Vast Branding, Embraer, Car Power, Ameripower, and the routine overpricing of contracts through sole sourcing are huge. Economic mismanagement and corruption has resulted in Ghana turning to the IMF for a bailout. Fellow Ghanaians, Ghana's sovereign credit rating has been downgraded from B plus positive. Without oil, Ghana was being rated as B plus positive under the MPP. We've now come down with oil under the NDC and John Mahama to B minus with a stable outlook in 2016. So we've gone from B plus to B minus with oil. In fact, international credit ratings agencies like Moody's, Fitch, Standard & Poor's now have basically the same credit rating for Ghana. The recent revision of Ghana's outlook from B minus negative to B minus stable, that is the equivalent of B3, that Moody's has. We've, the outlook was revised from negative to stable, has resulted in a misinterpretation by this NDC government and President Mahama that Ghana's credit rating has been upgraded. This is in fact not the case. Moody's did not upgrade Ghana. Ghana's rating under Moody's is still B minus. It is only the outlook that has been revised 
And that is not equivalent to a change in ratings or a, change, a, a ratings upgrade. The outlook is not equivalent to an upgrade in the ratings. Sometimes one wonders whether they don't read or they don't understand. So, so, let me give Mr. President a, a free piece of advice. Mr. President, please desist from embarrassing yourself by stating that Moody's has upgraded Ghana. Your economic management team should explain that difference to you. The Mo Ibrahim 2016 report on governance shows that on virtually all key indicators, such as safety and the rule of law, human rights, economic opportunities, infrastructure, business environment, human development, health and public management, all these indicators, Ghana is worse off today than it was 10 years ago. <laughs> 